The final technique that we're going to use to solve quadratics is called the quadratic formula. So you look down below and you see this crazy looking formula. And I'm going to answer the question now so you don't ask me later. No, I am not going to ask you to memorize this formula. But I will promise you that over the course of your math career, you will have this formula memorized like you have your address memorized. That's how frequently you're going to be using the quadratic formula further in your math careers. But for right now in algebra, I'm not going to ask you to memorize it. So the general form for a quadratic is ax squared plus bx plus c. And in order to use the quadratic formula, all you have to know is what numbers are in the a, b, and the c spot. And then you just plug it in the formula and see what you get. And then those are your values for x. So let's look at example one. Now, even in my level of experience, even with the level of experience that I have with solving quadratics, I still always go to the side and I just write what a, b, and c are. So a is the coefficient of x squared, so that's 2. b is the coefficient of x, so that's negative 5. And c is the, co c is the constant, which in this case is 3. Now, one thing you want to make sure before you do this is that you have it equal to zero because you can't do your coefficients until they're all together. So it has to be zero on one side and then the polynomial on the other. And now it's just a question of kind of plug it in and see what you get. So I'm going to write the formula, but instead of my formula, I'm going to write down what goes where. So in the formula, it's negative b, so negative negative 5 is 5 plus or minus the square root of b squared. Now, I'm going to put the negative 5 in parentheses because it's negative, and you always put negatives and fractions in parentheses, minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is 3. All of that gets divided by 2 times 2. Okay, now it's just a question of order of operations. So x equals 5 plus or minus the square root, negative 5 squared is 25, minus, um, that's 24, all divided by 4. Okay, let's continue. x equals 5 plus or minus the square root of 1 over 4. So that becomes 5 plus or minus 1 over 4. Now, in the past, I always would make you write positive 1 and negative 1, but that's what these symbols take into, a, into a, um, consideration, that the symbol could be positive or negative. So you don't have to do it both ways because that's what this plus or minus does. And then you split it up and you say, well... It could be 5 plus 1 over 4, or it could be 5 minus 1 over 4. So the possible values of x um, are 6 over 4, which would reduce to 3 halves. That's one value of x. And the other value of x is 4 over 4, which is 1. If you want to try the second example on your own, go for it. If not, Follow along. I'm going to go to the side and write A is 4, B is 20, and C is 25. So I write the formula X equals negative B, which in this case is 20, plus or minus the big square root of 20 squared now, I'm not going to put the 20 squared in parentheses just because it's positive, um, but you could if you wanted to. Minus 4 times A, which is 4, times C, which is 25. All divided by 2 times 4. Okay, keep going. Negative 20 plus or minus the big square root of 400 minus... Uh, 400, oh, all right, just go with it, uh, all over 
8. Okay, let's keep going. x equals negative 20 plus or minus the square root of 0, all divided by 8. Take it up top. x equals negative 20 plus or minus 0 all over 8. Now, I mean, I hope you would realize that plus 0 is the same as minus 0. So they're both going to be the same, right? Because you could do this, negative 20 plus 0 over 8 and negative 20 minus 0 over 8. But hello, duh, they're the same thing. So you only have to really solve one of them. Um, so that's going to be negative 20 eighths which is negative 10 fourths, which reduces to negative uh, 5 over 2. Negative 5 over 2. So that's my answer, and it's the same on the other side. Okay, for example 3, I'm going to start you off, and then uh, at one point I'm going to ask you to see if you can continue it on your own. The number of northern Rocky Mountain wolf breed pairs X years since 1995 can be modeled by that quadratic. When were there about 30 breeding pairs? So Y represents the number of breeding pairs. So I'm going to plug that in for Y. And while I'm writing this down, I can see that there are decimal coefficients. Nobody in their right mind would want to solve a quadratic by like factoring or completing the square or nothing with decimal coefficients. So that's when the quadratic formula really comes into play. The last thing that I'm going to do with you is remember you have to get all the numbers over to one side, all the terms. So this is the quadratic that I'm going to ask you to solve. Now go through it, solve it, and then when you think you have your values of x, play, and then we'll talk about what they mean. Okay, so sometimes they're friendly integers or um, fractions, and sometimes they're not. So I rounded this one to 4.6, and I rounded this one to thir negative 13.3. And again, if you didn't get these, then obviously take a minute and look for your mistake. Um, but... What I want to point out is whenever there's a story involved, you want to go back and read it. So this says X years since 1995. So we don't know what happened before 1995. So we're not going to go backwards in time. So this one gets rejected and it's got to be 4.6. But that's not really the question. 4.6 is not the answer. What they're asking you is when were there about 30 breeding pairs? So the correct answer is around 1999 to 2000. Because 4.6 would be 1999.6, which realistically isn't a real time. Um, so I'll say around 1999 to 2000. And that's going to be my answer to when there were approximately 30 breeding pairs. Last thing let's talk about is this thing called the discriminant. Now, the discriminant is a portion of the formula that is, um, tells you something about the quadratic. And there should be a portion of the formula that you already recognize. This stuff in black right here, x equals negative b over 2a, that was our formula for finding the axis of symmetry. So that's in this formula. And then the other part of the formula is this thing called the discriminant. You can use the discriminant to determine the number of roots, also known as solutions, of a quadratic. Now, if you go back to your 9.2 video notes, you see something very similar to this. I believe it's in 9.2. If not, it's somewhere um, where we talked about how many roots there are. Maybe it was 9.1. I'm not sure. Um, but we talked about how you could tell how many roots there are. The discriminant can also tell you how many roots there are. If the discriminant is positive, then you have two roots. If the discriminant is zero, then you have one root. And if the discriminant is negative, then you have no roots, meaning that the two answers that you would have would be in the imaginary group of numbers. 
So what I want to do with you now is last example four, which is just to use a discriminant to figure out how many roots there are. Sometimes people use the discriminant to determine if something's factorable or not, um, but that's for another lesson. So as I told you, I always write A, B, C. And then I write my discriminant formula and I plug it in. So B is 8 minus 4 times 1 times negative 3. That's 64 plus 12, so 76. Since the discriminant is positive, then that means that there are two real solutions. Okay, let's check out the other one. Before you do that, if you want to do this on your own, that's fine, but I will warn you that you have to move the 6x over. Now you can do A, B, and C. Um, so B is negative 6, 4 times 2 times 7, that is 36 minus 56, so that's negative 20. Since the discriminant is negative, then that means that I have no real solutions. If you have questions, write them down and ask me when you see me next.